Lately, I've been wanting to make some type of wall art piece to personalize and spice up my office space, specifically some 3D type of art that I could emulate with my 3D printer. One type of art that caught my eye is parametric wall art. Usually it's made by cutting thin pieces of wood into a pattern that looks kind of like a wave or mountain topography when you space them out a bit and mount them to a wall. People sell decently large versions of these for a pretty penny on Etsy and other sites. I wanted to see if I could design a version of this with pieces that I could fit within the print volume of my 3D printer. Unfortunately, mine won't be at the height of the ones we're looking at right now, but I could make it somewhat long to make it more of a slender rectangular shape instead of a square shape, and it's definitely going to cost me less than the ones on Etsy. I made this model in Autodesk Fusion 360. I'll walk through the software tools that I use to make this type of organic-ish shape if you wanted to try it out yourself. So first, I created a sketch of a roughly 40 by 8 inch rectangle and then extruded it to be a few inches tall. With the solid model made, I created a wonky wavy sketch on one end that I wanted to sweep and cut across the surface. To do this, I created another sketch on the top surface of a path with a spline that I'm going to use the sweep feature to take my first sketch and cut the solid body following the path of the second sketch. Now we have our somewhat organic wave in our model. Next, I created another sketch that has a bunch of rectangles that I'm going to cut from the side to create the gaps in our model and create a bunch of individual solid pieces to print out. After a bunch of hours of printing all of these pieces out, I tried to space them out evenly on a thin piece of wood that I had lying around by using a tape measure. Once they were spaced out evenly enough to satisfy me, I used some super glue that I had to bond each piece in place, and then I let the whole thing sit overnight to make sure that the glue was dry before painting it. The next morning, I put the piece on two sawhorses and sprayed it completely in a few layers of black glossy paint. I wanted to use a glossy paint so the light in my office would reflect off of the wavy shape better. I was pretty satisfied with the shine on the finish, but I could have made it a bit better by sanding the pieces individually beforehand to avoid some of the layer lines that are visible after painting it. But I'm not going to be looking at this under a microscope when it's on my wall, so that's good enough for me. If you're liking this video and want to see more 3D printing and design content, feel free to press the like button for the video and subscribe to the channel. My first thought for mounting this was to use Command Strip brand Velcro to hold it to the wall. But because it was being supported over such a thin height, the whole piece tilted and probably would have fallen off after a little bit. My second mounting idea was to design and print brackets that would have three screw holes, one in the middle to screw into the back of the wood on the piece, and then two to screw into the wall using drywall anchors. Here are the brackets holding it up and the poor man's version of some parametric wall art in its final resting location. Initially I wanted to have it behind my monitors, but when I used the sit stand feature on my desk it would have hit my monitors and then broken off. So. Better off that I put it on the wall next to my PC setup instead. I actually realized after the fact that I could have made it look more like a mountain topography instead of a single wave by using a different design tool feature called a loft cut. For this type of cut, I can make a bunch of different sketches along where I want that cut path to be and then connect all of them and the shape warps to match and flow in between each sketch. This makes the model look more organic and resemble the parametric wall art that I found online a little bit more, but I do like how mine came out so I'm not going to reprint anything. But if you did want to make this yourself you can try out this method as well.
Thank you for watching the video. Subscribe if you're not already, it helps out the channel a lot. And let me know what other videos you'd like to see on this channel. I have some more tech-based videos coming out soon. Thank you again for watching and have a great rest of your day.